be sure to check out Big Boy Collectibles for all your G.I. Joe action figure needs. Whether it's vintage or new, Big Boy Collectibles has it. Check them out at BigBoyCollectibles.com. What's going on everyone? ODC, it's me here, and we're back with another action figure review. Today's review, we're going to take a look at the G.I. Joe, Sergeant Savage, and the Screaming Eagles. This is his P-40 Warhawk. Um, this was released in 1994, um, so this is an older set. Um, this is uh, a set that's probably not meant for everyone out there. It's probably not everyone's cup of tea, but it's definitely down my alley. I'm a big War World War II buff, um, always have been even as a kid um so pretty awesome there my dad was in the service my grandfather was in the service my great grandfather was in the service um my grandfather being in world war ii um so uh pretty awesome here so this is uh <laughs> um this is pretty awesome it's got a nice really good flow of old school and um, a little bit more of a uh, modernized look for an old school plane is what I should say. Um, it does come with Sergeant Savage here. He does come with a Thompson machine gun, which he's holding right now. He doesn't really hold it too well, to be honest with you. It's these old school hands right here um, that we're used to from the 90s uh, and the 80s. He's also a little bit larger, so I'm not really sure um, what Hasbro was thinking going with a <laughs> almost a five inch figure. Um, and we'll just bring in hit and run right here uh, just to compare. Here's a three and three quarter inch figure uh, next to Sergeant Savage. And you can see he's way out of scale, so you can't even put him with your regular G.I. Joes because he's just a giant. Um, if you're not familiar with um, Sergeant Savage, I'll give you a little bit of a backstory. Uh, basically, He's kind of a ripoff of uh, Captain America. I want to be honest with you. Um, if you missed out on the show, I'm going to be honest with you, you didn't miss much. It wasn't that great, to be honest with you. Um, his backstory basically is um, Captain America on steroids, basically. But uh, So it wasn't my cup of tea. I just, I, I don't know. It, it seemed lack of originality. And I just, it's not, it's not for me. Maybe it's for other people. I don't know, but... Uh, for me, nah, no thank you. So, with that being said, taking a look at the figure here, he does, uh, like I said, he does come with his Thompson machine gun. And it's just um, like a dark gray plastic. Uh, there's no shading or anything to it. Um, he does, uh, as far as his articulation does go, his head, or his helmet can come off. And his head can kind of swivel move up and down a little bit he's got a little, looks like some job turkey up in here um okay uh but <laughs> his head can swivel side to side he cannot do a full 360 rotation his arms go up down full 360 um he does have a bicep swivel a single bend at the elbow that's pretty much it right there a waist swivel he does have these awkward leg joints they're like wide jointed hips almost um not really sure what they were thinking. Um, they're almost all on ball joints, but they don't want to do the splits, really. He's kind of always pigeon-toed when you have him standing. Not really. You can't really get his feet to stay straight. And even when he sits down, I mean, he sits down nicely, but uh, not that great, really. Um, as far as how natural he looks sitting down, I don't know. This leg's higher than that leg. I don't know. It looks kind of weird. Single bend at the knee, which is actually a really good single bend. And uh, that's pretty much it for his articulation. Um, he does come with his helmet, which is a sculpted... Uh, got some sculpted goggles on there. Um, I don't know. This just... Ugh. I don't know. That's. I did not buy this set for him. I'm just going to be honest with you right there. Uh, I don't like the character. And uh, I don't know. Just kind of a ripoff. Um, it does come with four. Count them four missiles which you can shoot and you can also store on the plane um probably the biggest detriment to this set is probably the the missile storage um the holes for the barbell system on these missiles are really i mean it's just not they're not they don't they're not sculpted in very deep so when you put these on they're kind of just sitting there by a wing and a prayer um and when you bump them or tap them into something they eventually get loose and they fall right off uh, which is a really big pain in the rear end. But, 
And if I can get this on here, I don't know why it's not. See, it doesn't doesn't really want to uh, stay on. And actually, when I originally shot this review, because this wasn't the first time I shot this, I'll be honest with you. Usually, I do a one-time deal. Um, these just kept falling off, and it was getting frustrating. So I just had to reshoot the review. Um, but these can get uh, pretty frustrating here. And there's little grooves, which I'll show you in a second, that you kind of have to put these into. There's little grooves, little tab grooves right here where you have to put this fin of the missile in there to kind of line it up. But, um, but let's see, and there we go. There's one missing already. Um, but it does have this, um, this little rocket launcher right here where you can kind of plug these in like so. And you kind of have to use some force in there to do to do that. And then you just want to press down this little tab right here and it shoots them right out. Like so. So that's pretty cool. Um, th it's It really just kind of bothers me that these won't stay pegged in the way I want them to. Um, it's just such a shallow crevice for the barbell. So I'm just going to leave that off. I don't even want to dick around with that. Um, it does have landing gear, which is... Um, you can fold it up and I'll show you that right now as you see here you just kind of want to swivel that wheel in and then push this down swivel that wheel in and push that down as well so nothing too crazy um, this does take two AA batteries and uh, it's got a Phillips, Phillips head screw right there I would uh, I would recommend being very gentle with this Phillips bleh, I can't talk Phillips head screw here um, mine was attempting to start stripping and I stopped immediately so it's kind of in there lightly but this does have an action feature to it which is actually pretty cool um, and actually gives this some points, this plane some points in my book. Not just the uh, the aesthetics of the plane, um, that, those are big points already, being World War II style. But this light, the the uh, the sounds that that come with the um, the button here. Now this is a button, and it does it does look a little bit deceiving here. Like you kind of want to wind it up, like kind of scroll that back. But <coughs> excuse me. All you want to do is you want to just press that in. So you just want to push that in, and then you hear that sound right there, and that actually turns the propeller. Not only does it turn the propeller, but it also turns the large machine gun that's actually in one of the oddest positions that you could put a big machine gun. But it's pretty cool. Um, this actually should be lowered down a little bit further. Um, by design, it's a little bit guilty because due to this shooting, if this was actually functional, this would not be uh, placed here. It would have to be further down due to the propeller in the front for the prop. Um, this, If these guns were going off while this was spinning, it would shoot the blades right off of the plane. As you can see, they overlap. So this would actually, in reality, have to be down here. But, I mean, we're, we're not talking reality here. We're talking G.I. Joe. So I'm willing to just assume that they've timed this prop uh, properly. Uh, <laughs> they, they've timed this properly enough where when this is shooting, it's just missing the blades or missing the blades. So, I mean, you can use your imagination any way you want. That's the best part about toys and G.I. Joe and... and um, and uh, anything uh, pop culture related uh, is that you can use your imagination to um, use things however you want. Um, there were uh, a bunch of stickers I kept some off due to so due to um, some of the stickers I just didn't like or didn't want on there. Um, so I left a couple off. I might put this sticker on. I might put that on. That these actually these two stickers actually go in the back portion of the plane right here next to that, but I, I just felt like there was like almost too many stickers on top of each other, so I kept it off. There's a couple other I kept off, like uh, Sergeant Savage's um, ID, which is supposed to go right here in the, underneath the cockpit. Um, I kept that off because I'm gonna use this for a different character, um, but uh, it, it does have the stars on each wing in the front, and I put number 44 on there. Um, these were actually already on my plane when I got them. I actually picked this up from a um, flea market for really dirt, dirt, dirt cheap. So, 
Um, it actually came with the original packaging. And uh, let me just get this out of the way. We'll get to the cockpit and everything else in a second. I'll just show you the packaging really quick. Um, there's the original packaging that it came in. Um, it's in actually really good shape, um, even the way that they opened the box, because it was already pre-opened when I got it. Um, looks pretty good. Like I said, this set was uh, was was uh, released in 1994. I kind of wish that this cockpit was green like this on the on my release or on the original release. I also, by design, it w would have worked out better. I think if. Um, if some of these uh, props were already attached, like, um, let me just see here, uh, like this top portion. Mine's a little bit loose, um, and I don't know if I'm a big fan of that. Um, I understand that these, the, the, the ones that stick out that way, um, they had to be removable, but sometimes, uh, just to forewarn you guys, some of them are, uh, get a little bit loose. But other than that, this is a great plane. Um, let me just get the landing gear down here. Or actually, you know what, I'll leave it up and I'll show you guys the cockpit. So opening up this cockpit, which um, actually opens up from the front and I think that's a better, um, a, a better case scenario as far as designs go. There is more than enough room. You can almost fit two figures in here without a problem. There's more than enough room because it's due to him being, him coming, or this uh, plane coming with a larger style figure. Right now I got Falcon in there, that's kind of our test dummy. But um, there's a little bit of sculpting right here um, on the inside of the plane. There's a little bit of sculpting and some gauges on the side of, of each uh, of the panels on the inside of the cockpit. Um, I'd say the hatch is probably not the best safest hatch. I always get afraid of these plastic tabs right here, these clear plastic tabs. So be forewarned, this is clear plastic and you always want to you want to be careful with clear plastic. So um, there's that. Um, let me just get the landing gear down here. Sometimes this landing gear also doesn't like to stay down. Um, these wheels, due to them kind of having to swivel in like this, they do tend to want to gravitate towards this area and then they start the plane will start to fall over so just forewarning everyone i'm not saying that this is uh you know the worst plane ever because I, I really do enjoy this plane i might actually give it to my see that's what i'm talking about this kind of wants to fold in you kind of have to push this out until you hear a snap almost um but I think it looks really good. I would have liked a little bit more paint detail here for the uh, the exhaust or the header right here coming off the engine port and off the inside. Um, it would have looked a little bit better. I might go over this and paint that really quick. I'll paint that a nice gray. But I do like the, uh, the machine guns here, the sculpted on machine guns. Those look pretty cool. And overall, it's got a pretty decent sculpt, and I really do like the color green that they decided to go with this. I think it's a very natural style green. Um, but here, here we go, uh, just a little uh, size comparison here. Here we have Hit and Run next to the uh, P-40 Warhawk. And I think it looks good. Uh, Falcon looks good inside the, the cockpit there. And uh, I think this is, I mean, if you expand your horizons, you want to use your imagination, you could almost, um, if you wanted to, and you, you like Sergeant, Sa Sergeant Savage, you could almost say that uh, either Sergeant Savage or some other World War II veteran passed this down throughout G.I. Joe. And this is kind of G.I. Joe's legacy baby right here. You know what I mean? It's their baby. It's their legacy. And they always pass it down to one of the best fighter pilots because the best fighter pilot have to use some of the oldest equipment but yet it's got updates um, so it almost looks like a um, an older modernized plane um, so that's pretty cool almost like a restoration project for GI Joe themselves so I can dig that I definitely uh, do like this plane I would recommend it um, I would probably give it a one and a half thumbs though I, I don't know if I <sighs> There's certain things about it, like the, the missiles really kind of piss me off, I'm going to be honest with you. The missiles not staying attached here almost kind of wants me to put these missiles away in a bag so they don't fall off and I don't lose them. Um, but still, I, I would recommend this plane, so I guess I can't say too much bad about it. The missiles piss me off. 
The cockpit, be very careful with. That could tend to snap off. Um, so this actually, this missile launcher, it does not work anymore. I don't know why there's some sort of malfunction going on with the spring, but overall, I would say I do like the plane and I would recommend it, even though it's got issues. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you for watching as always, and I'll see you guys on the flip side.